The climax of the prophecy is here brought to view. When the history of nations is considered, it is very clear that kingdoms come and kingdoms go. But here is presented a kingdom that will not be destroyed. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. The reason for this is found in the next verse. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. That it was cut out without hands is the reason given that it will never be destroyed. What is the stone and what is meant that it was cut out without hands? Jesus Christ, when speaking to the Jews, tells us what this crushing stone is. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Speaking to the Jews again, Jesus tells us what it means to be cut out without hands. I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. In this statement Jesus made, he was speaking about the temple of his body. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. The meaning is clear. With hands means the thing is accomplished through a human agency. Without hands means through a supernatural agency. This is further proven in the book of Hebrews. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Moses built the Hebrew sanctuary with all its offerings and ceremonies. This was done through the human agency. But when Christ went to heaven after his resurrection, he entered into the heavenly sanctuary. And that is referred to as not being made with hands. In other words, there was no human input into the building of it. The mountain that was the origin of the stone is recorded in Hebrews 12 verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels. Therefore, this stone that is cut out without hands refers to the resurrected, glorified Christ, who will leave the heavenly city, known as Mount Zion, return to earth in a physical, literal, and visible manner as king and ruler of this world. This stone is not any particular church or religious organization, because these are all administered by human beings. It is important to note that this final and everlasting dominion is set up without human power or help. No human agency is responsible for the stone being cut out of the mountain, nor responsible for it being hurled with great force against the image. The setting up of this everlasting kingdom and the destruction of the earthly dominions are accomplished by Jesus Christ himself. The timing of the setting up of this final kingdom is clearly indicated, although no exact time is given, a way mark is clearly laid out before us. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. The plurality of kings here mentioned refers to the division made after the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD. We are currently still living in this European division and therefore are living in the days of these kings or kingdoms. So the kingdom that is yet to be realized is to be done so during the existence of the various nations of Europe and before any one world government comes to fruition. Now some may say that the kingdom was realized during the first advent of Jesus Christ. Christ plainly taught that his kingdom was still future when he had the last supper with his disciples. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Again, Christ did not set up this kingdom before his ascension. 
When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Also, Christ did not teach us something to pray for that was already fulfilled, when he said, Pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The Bible teaches us that this kingdom is a matter of promise to the believer in Christ. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? And it was told us in the Scriptures that it would be set up when Christ shall judge the living and the dead. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Some may ask, what kingdom was realized when Christ first came to earth? There are two types of kingdoms brought to light in the Bible. The kingdom of grace and the kingdom of glory. One is current and the other is future. This is simply shown by the text in Hebrews where it says to come boldly before the throne of grace. This is present tense. The other is mentioned in Matthew 25, 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him and he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. And this is future. A throne implies a kingdom and so the kingdom of grace was realized during Jesus' first advent and the kingdom of glory will be realized at his second advent. The prophecy tells us that during the existence of the various nations of Europe, that Jesus Christ himself will set up a kingdom. It will not be left in the hands of a church or an organization or a board of directors or any other representative. Christ himself personally will administer this kingdom. It also tells us that when he comes, the nations of this world will be destroyed. This is the time when all wickedness and evil will cease to rule our world. Looking at the history of the world as we have done, there has only been war, bloodshed and wickedness. And mankind does not have the capacity to develop a righteous kingdom in this world. At the time of the destruction of the nations, Babylon, Persia, Greece and Rome will lose all the legacy they have left behind. And it is then that the gold and silver, brass and iron will cease to exist in all things. While Babylon, Persia, Greece and Rome do not have dominion, what they have done while they had dominion is still present in our world today. Babylon, the source of cultic religion and spiritualism, is alive and well today. Persia, that pioneered the principles of rulership through global economy and worldwide trade, is also very prominent today. Greece introduced philosophy and mind culture coupled with sports and Olympic games that has never been lost in our world. Rome, with the principles of an iron government clothed in the garb of democracy and republicanism, is also alive and well today. However, when Jesus Christ comes, all this, the gold and the silver, the brass and the iron, will be destroyed and forgotten in the kingdom to come. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. After the nations have been blown away and the earth has been cleaned from their existence, then Mount Zion will fill the whole earth. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. God has made a guarantee that that which is yet to take place is sure to happen. And the prophecy is true and faithful. Daniel gives this guarantee to the king of Babylon. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. The prophecy has been accurate for well over 2,000 years. And it would be very unwise to dismiss the last part of the prophecy as untrue. In the book of Psalms, it gives us good instruction as to the last part of Daniel chapter 2. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. The instruction was to trust the Lord. The center verse of the King James Bible is Psalms 118 verse 8. 
It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. God loves you and wants you to have an expected end. Unlike all the nations before us, we need to take heed to the warnings so that we can be with Christ in his glorious kingdom.